our video feeds take us to Florida right now where Debbie slams the state's Big Bend areas. Hurricane one. Uh, it's bringing heavy rains, flash flooding and some pretty powerful winds. In fact, look at this video. More than 200,000 people because of this are without electricity. Uh, the area that is in the red is what we're talking about. That is where it is go time. Not just an inconvenience. It's just downright dangerous because one of the impacts major air travel delays and cancellations. We can tell you that right now, more than 16,000 flights are delayed and more than 1,000 and counting are canceled. Passengers, in fact, at Miami International Airport say they spent hours in these customer service lines just waiting to get out. Our flight got canceled in Houston twice. They said because of weather. We had to catch another flight, pay money to catch another flight to get here, only to stand in the line for two hours, being moved back and forth, back and forth. And you know, one of the heartbeats of this broadcast is being in your communities when news happens. And CBS News' Tom Hansen, that's where he is, right in somebody's neighborhood, Horseshoe Beach, Florida. Tom, paint a picture for us. Hey there, Reed. Well, we just got here on the ground after driving from Crystal River, and I just want to take you guys around what we're seeing because this is one of the areas that was hit the hardest where the storm made landfall so you can see around me that there was a lot of standing water bent signs from those powerful winds and as we've known and told you about reported on all day this storm is much more concerning because of its slow speed heavy rainfall and the potential for flooding and you may see that this doesn't appear to be too much flooding but at one point in time this was according to the mayor about five feet of standing water and this is not the end of the road for this community because at three o'clock in literally one and a half hours they are going to get what's called a king tide and that is going to push water right back up so people who are able to get things out of their homes right now they're going to have to evacuate they're going to shut down this entire area where we are standing because of that king tide which is going to prove to be difficult for search and rescue as well as for people trying to pick up what's left of their homes but this is really the scene here that we're seeing right now where you can see the remnants of some severe flooding that happened uh you know just moments ago pretty much Reed. And you know, Tom, what I'm not seeing behind you in any of those streets, at least in that neighborhood, are storm drains. Many parts of the country benefit from storm drains. Now that ground is saturated, so any more moisture from the sky, and you've got flooding once again. It just adds to the peril of this situation. Oh, absolutely. And this is a coastal community, so it is right at sea level. This is one of those places that is most vulnerable in these kinds of weather events. And speaking of these kinds of weather events, this is also one of the exact communities where about a year ago, Hurricane Adalia wreaked serious havoc, ha uh, wreaked serious havoc and caused significant damage uh, in this area. So there are a lot of people here who are still cleaning up from that catastrophic event only to have to do the same thing again one year later. And just to remind you, Reed, that also happened in August of 2023. So we are just days away from that one year anniversary as Debbie made landfall here. CBS News correspondent Tom Hansen once again in your communities. When news breaks, you are always there for us, Tom. Thank you so much. You be safe as well, my friend. Okay, so let's bring in Jessica right now. He mentioned something that really educates me a lot. When those storms just hover and they sit, yes. that's when the saturation and the flooding can really happen. Absolutely. Freshwater flooding is a big concern when it comes to hurricanes like this. Now it's a tropical storm, so we need to talk about the before, the during, the after. We now know it hit at about a category one, about 80 mile per hour sustained winds. You see right here, this is our live cam in Jacksonville. They're about to see some of the heavier rain within the next 20 hours. Now, one thing I want to show right now, too, let's head over to the map. It has to do with the extreme low level flooding that's going to happen along the coastline, anywhere from Georgia all the way over into the Carolinas. Like Reed mentioned, that storm is going to move slow and it is going to continue to dump rain into communities where we could see record breaking numbers right around the corner. We have tropical storm warnings and watches. We have flood watches in effect right now. 
And as we take a look right behind me, we continue to keep a close eye not only on Florida now. Now we're starting to keep our eyes just a little bit more north as they are gearing up and preparing for some heavy storm surge and some heavy freshwater flooding in the inland areas. Here's the track right now. Tropical storm Debbie hit at 80 miles per hour just along that coastline. Storm surge was a concern there, but now it's tracking inland. That's going to make it lose some of its energy within the next two days. And then it sits slowly just over the shoreline of the Carolinas, stretching down into Georgia. And that's where the big concern is when it comes to record breaking numbers of heavy historic rain. Now, this is going to be forecast to be one of the wettest four day periods on record just into cities anywhere from Savannah all the way up into Charleston. We see storm surge as a concern. We see localized flooding as a concern and we'll continue to keep you updated on this this tropical storm as it moves throughout that region. As we head into Wednesday, it's only expected to move just about 20 miles within a 12 hour period. So that just to put it into perspective is how slow the storm is currently moving, Reed. All right, Jess, thank you so much.